In 2021, the Nintendo Switch had a ton of awesome games come out for it. There was just so much to play. I mean, Metroid Dread, people love that game. You had Monster Hunter Rise, Monster Hunter Stories 2, Shin Megami Tensei 5, Pokemon Snap, the new Pokemon Snap, Mario Party Superstars. I love Mario Party uh, Superstars, one of the better Mario Party games, you know, in the past few years or so, right? I mean, there's a lot of cool games that came out. Game Builder Garage, a lot of stuff I enjoyed immensely, and I know a lot of you guys did as well. But in 2022, it, it, there's just so much stuff coming out. There's been so many games announced, and just in the early part of the year, there's a ton of stuff, man. It's so hard to keep track of all this. So in this video today, I want to talk about my top five games that I'm extremely looking forward to for the Nintendo Switch, and most of these are coming out in a matter of weeks or maybe within the next couple months or so. It's just crazy how many games are coming out that just look amazing. So let's go ahead and get this party started. No particular order. Just want to talk about these games that I'm really looking forward to. So first up, Triangle Strategy. This one's coming out March 4th, so very soon. It's being published by Nintendo and developed by Square. And the project's being led by the producer of Bravely Default and Octopath Traveler. This is a turn-based tactics RPG. The story takes place in the continent of Norzelia during a war in which there's three countries fighting over limited resources. I believe it's salt and iron. There's a lot more to it, obviously. But the game, the style, it uses the same HD 2D graphics that Octopath Traveler did. And I just love that style. Octopath Traveler was, is one of my favorite games on the Switch. I know, you know, not everybody's into the same style of games, but this one being, you know, similar to stuff like Final Fantasy Tactics and whatnot, I'm down in it. I can't wait. So the game, when it was initially announced in early 2021, they put out a demo. And at that time, that demo was used to get player feedback, which in turn was used to help shape some of the final game's mechanics and gameplay. Like, they used that feedback to refine camera movement, uh, implement extra difficulty settings, uh, being able to skip dialogue. I guess some people don't like reading dialogue, just want to skip through it. I mean, hey, I, I get it sometimes, but in this type of game, I got to know what's going on, you know what I mean? But some people, they want to maybe second play through, you know, whatever. They just want to get through that dialogue quick. I, I, I get it. I get it. Now, they, they also made a lot of other tweaks to the game um, as well due to this test. And it said the game is aiming for a 50-hour playthrough for the main campaign. So it's looking like this is going to be a beefy one. Uh, if it's going to be 50 hours for the main campaign, I'm sure with doing any of the side quests, extras, maybe little extra stories and whatnot, it's going to be a lot longer than that. But hey, you know, these types of games, I like getting my money's worth out of them by having, you know, a lot of gameplay. So this one I'm extremely like excited for i cannot wait now the next one on my list uh chocobo gp this one's coming out like right after uh triangle strategy it comes out on march 10th and man I, I i love these types of racing games i've always loved racing games but kart racers ever since mario kart like i've always loved all the mario kart games and there's been tons of imitators you know what i mean some do it better than others some not so much. I mean, what was that? Hello Kitty Racers? Oh my god, that game was was not good. But, uh, you know, Chocobo Racing on the PlayStation 1, I love that game. And this one is looking to improve upon that, at least I hope. I mean, there's a couple interesting things going on here. So with this game, you're going to have tons of familiar characters from the Final Fantasy, you know, franchise. You're going to have actual characters. Uh, you're going to have summons, different, uh, you know, boss monsters, stuff that you recognize if you've been into Final Fantasy. But as far as the gameplay goes, I mean, you're going to have like your story mode, your verses, stuff like that. But one of the intriguing things is that 64 player online tournament. It's like a knockout tournament. That looks to be pretty awesome. You're going to have that iconic music. Finishing a race and like winning plays the uh, victory fanfare music. So, Tons of music from the Final Fantasy franchise. And the, the, the interesting thing is when the game releases, there's going to be a free light version, which essentially I guess you can look at it as if it's like a demo of the game, but it's a little more than a demo, I suppose. It allows you to play the uh, story's prologue, some multiplayer. 
You get to participate in different things, and your save carries over to the main game if you wind up buying it. I like that. I kind of wish they would put this out before the game releases, but it's going to be the same day. And hey, at least you get to decide, you know, play that and see, like, do I really want to spend the money for this game? Now, moving on, number three on the list, which not really number three. It's just the third game I'm talking about. Like I said, no particular order. Uh, this one, yeah, Advance Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp. Uh, this was originally set to release last December. Nintendo decided to delay it until spring of this year, saying that, you know, they needed some more time for fine-tuning. And, hey, I can appreciate that. I love the original games, and, you know, I had tons of fun playing through the campaign. Spent many hours linking up, playing multiplayer with a friend at work during swing shift hours. We were security at a Target store warehouse. I mean, we had a lot of downtime in the evenings, and... I even remember the dispatchers who worked for Target. You know, they'd be sitting in the office playing some Game Boy Advance games as well. So, hey, we were still taking care of business and we were taking advantage of the time where we had nothing to do. So why not have some battles, right? Really great memories for me. But when I first saw the remakes, I was a little hesitant, a little skeptical, mostly with the style of the graphics. But, like, I mean, you kind of have to accept, like, okay, they're remakes. They're not just... You know, if they just did an HD upscale of the originals, people would still complain, right? Like, hey, you didn't really do anything. But, you know, this is being, like, built from the ground up type of thing. And over time, I, I think I, I, I set aside my initial thoughts on the graphic style and just accepted it. Like, hey, it still looks okay, and it still looks like Advance Wars, so I'm looking forward to it. Can't wait for this one. Now, moving on. We're almost at the end here. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. Man, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, they've gone through many different phases and styles over the year and, you know, different forms of media, the cartoons, movies, and games and whatnot. Uh, and there has been a decent amount of games over the years. I mean, just look at the list of released nin uh, Ninja Turtle games. Like, there's been a ton of them for home consoles, handheld, mobile, newer stuff in the arcades. Um, but the ones I always go back to are those early 90s arcade games and the NES and Super Nintendo ports of those games, right? So to see that .emu, the people behind Streets of Rage 4 were working on a new retro-inspired Turtles beat-em-up was just freaking awesome. Many people are looking forward to this one. I mean, it has amazing-looking pixel art, tons of familiar characters and locations. This one is supposed to be inspired by the 80s cartoon, it does look like it's taking some liberties with that style, but it still looks amazing to me. I'm hoping this is the, the tribute 80s turtle fans want, and I'm hoping fans of the turtles from any decade will have fun with this one. I mean, it looks like it's, it's gonna be one of the greatest games ever. Extremely looking forward to it. All right, final one, final one, real quick. Kirby and the Forgotten Land. This comes out March 25th. A lot of these games come out in March. Holy crap, man. They're going to be buying a lot of games in March. going to have enough time to play them all? I hope so. Now, Kirby has been one of those franchises that I really enjoyed, uh, you know, over the years. But those experiences were really the greatest for me back on the NES and the Game Boy. Played plenty of the other games over the years, but none really left as much of an impression as those original titles. Now, my kids, they, they really enjoy Kirby as well. They love the Kirby uh, Star Allies, and I thought that was a pretty good game as well, but there was just something missing. Didn't seem fresh to me, and that's what has me fascinated by Kirby and the Forgotten Land. It, 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 it looks like something new. It, it's Kirby-style gameplay mixed in the Super Mario Odyssey, and I'm all for it. More space to move around, items to collect, areas to explore. The game just looks magical to me. I mean, what is the story? I don't really know. I mean, I kind of know, but I don't know. It, it, there's a mystery here, and I can't wait to find out. So, I mean, we're now getting Kirby in an action platformer in a more open 3D world. You're going to be saving Waddle Dees, adding them to your home base, growing the town, uh, which will give you access to things to do in the game, like special mini games, and most likely more than just that. Like, you're going to be growing that little Waddle Dee village, I guess. And, you know, we're, we're currently celebrating Kirby's 30th anniversary, and I'm hoping there's going to be a lot more with Kirby this year. 
But this game looks to be a good start to the celebration, in my opinion. Hey, maybe we'll get like a Kirby Game & Watch a compilation. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to this one. And there's just so much more the rest of the year that's coming out for the Switch that I haven't mentioned. I know some people, ah, you didn't mention Breath of the Wild 2 and all that kind of stuff. I wanted to focus more on stuff where we kind of had a good idea when it was coming out early this year. The stuff I'm excited for now that I know is coming out soon. Most of these games are coming out like in March. I think like three out of five of them, maybe four out of five. I don't know. There, <laughs> 70% of these games I talked about are coming out in March. So it's like stuff I'm looking forward to now. Let me know what you guys think about these particular titles I talked about. Looking forward to any of them. Uh, what else are you looking forward to? Games I didn't mention. Stuff coming out later in the year. Stuff we don't know for sure when it's coming out. Let me know in the comments. Really do appreciate every single one of you guys. And with that said, we'll catch y'all next time. Big ass blurry thumb butt like a big foot. Bye.